Okay, um, finally back in the shop. I've been in the shop and then got to catch you up on a lot of progress that's been going on. I just haven't been able to get it on film just because of various reasons, just getting interrupted a lot and not really having a consistent amount of time to come in and work on this stuff. But when I did, I did get a lot done. Uh, first thing is, uh, got the front suspension all tore off. Picking up the bypasses today, hopefully. Hopefully they're done today. The back end is all done. You guys saw that. And then this is the new um, front, upper, and lower control arms. I'm going to do final welding on them today and get them all put, buttoned up. And uh, let me show you what, uh, what I did. So if you remember, the upper control arm was a wishbone style. went like this. I'll show you the picture. The new style, let's see if I get the right one here, uh, is, is this. It goes like that. If you can see that. And what this does, what this does is it eliminates this arm here and moves it over here. It's called a J arm or a J link. J arm, very common trophy truck style front suspension. And the reason we do that is because the geometry gives it a, a larger overall triangle in combination with the lower control arm. Instead of having two triangles over the top of one another, you have opposing triangles that are connected at one fulcrum and it creates a giant, very strong structure when they're combined together. And it frees up all this room over here for your bypass or second second shock suspension system. So that's what we did, or yeah, what I did, added this. Gonna eliminate that or probably just leave it but not use it. So what I did was to save the geometry, I just cut this off of the upper control arm. You'll see it in the picture. And then I flipped it over to here, except because of the angle that the uniball is that mounts to the top of the upright. They don't want to, if I just took it and flipped it like this, the uniball angle would be opposite what it needs to be. It needs to be at an equal plane to the bottom one. So you take that one, I cut it off, flipped it over, but I also switch sides. So if that makes any sense, I'll, I'll try to show it in the diagram better, but I took the half of the upper wishbone control arm, cut the back, cut it off, and then flipped it to the front and to the opposite side to save the angles. So driver's side went to passenger side and passenger side went to driver's side. And that piece that I'm talking about is under here, inside here. And it maintains this angle. Can you see that? It maintains this angle. So this bar here, used to be over here and now it's over here over there <laughs> I probably screwed that explanation all up but you'll you'll see when I put it back together hopefully I'll have it all back on today get it all final welded I probably got another two hours of welding and then I can get those put on and I'll get the swing set steering welded up it's all cut and ready to weld and uh, I got the power steering pump and the gearbox. It's gonna go in here, the power steering box will go up here. Swing set will be here. This rack will go out and go in her bug. And then I'm gonna change the oil cooler and the transmission cooler. I'm gonna move those to back here and integrate them to the heat exchanger that's in this uh, radiator that I never used. When I ordered this, I ordered it with a big heat exchanger inside it. So I'm gonna run the transmission cooler or a fluid through the heat exchanger, through the two fan coolers, and then back into the transmission, keep the tranny temps down. And then I've also got a heat exchanger, um, heat diffuser uh, for the engine oil. And I also got a larger engine oil cooler. So, yeah. If any of that made sense, you'll see. Moving the tranny coolers to the back, integrating a heat exchanger to the transmission, 
integrating a heat diffuser with a larger oil cooler onto the oiling system of the motor. So more cooling coming from everything, engine, trans, everything. All right, anyway, uh, yeah, it's been crazy. But we're getting there. Uh, trying to get as much done before the holidays as possible because uh, I'm going to have to take a break for a little bit there and then I want to leave time uh, for testing. So, oh, and then we got the bigger tires. 37 inch tires. Can't wait to try to run those. So anyway, all right, back at it. Okay, so let's see, I'm kind of moving around. Um, got the front end done, I just finished burning this in and I welded these up, reinforced those a little bit. So that's all done. So the next thing I'm gonna do today is uh, get the steering going. Um, took the weekend off, uh, uh, went down to Rage at the River and checked that out. Uh, we've never been to a snore event before, so um, it was highly recommended that we go check out the Rage at the River because it's a good event. And uh, we had a blast, uh, yeah. Super fun, can't wait to uh, race uh, that event and uh, many other snore events. So um, that's about it. I just got back in this morning. It was super cold last night, got down to like 24 degrees last night. So um, I turned the heater on out here and uh, got out here about nine o'clock <clears throat> and uh, let things warm up a little bit. So back at it, I'm gonna uh, get the steering swing set welded together and get placement of it and then figure out where to put the uh the uh, power steering box so that's on today's agenda so yeah let's get to it
make room for the steering swing set stuff. I gotta move the siren, so. I gotta move the siren, the oil cooler. I'm gonna do away with this oil cooler. I got a big, a bigger oil cooler. It's gonna go up front here with dual fans on it. And then I'm gonna make this oil cooler. I'm gonna flush it out real good and add it, make it a, a second transmission cooler. So it'll be in tandem with, with the other one.
been so cold and the oil I run is so, I don't know, I don't know if you say thick, but at this temperature it's really thick. It's like not wanting to flow. My oil, my oil tank has a heater, heating element in it. I wonder if I should use it. I got that gearbox from another uh, racer. Um, so it is used, but it's in really good shape and um, was rebuilt not too long ago. So pretty confident it's gonna be a good one. I'll just clean it up on the outside. But yeah, it's gonna go really good right there. So I need to get something to hold it in there and then I'll weld together the swing set and then get it mocked up in there. So the alignment is correct. That thing's heavy and I need something to hold it up. Mighty ties, zip ties.